Hello, and welcome to this interview with Donna Rica, one of our artists on display at Elf Art Gallery and our current exhibit, Bonds Beyond Time. My name is Clara Ford, and today we'll be going over Donna Rica's artistic process and the work she generously presented to our physical and online spaces. How are you doing today, <laughs> Donna? Hi, thank you for having me. Doing well. How about yourself? That's good to hear. I'm doing great. Um, I'm interested to hear, and I know many others watching are interested, um, and how you became an artist and what direction your art is taking today. Did you think you were going to be an artist since you were young? Uh, well, I've been doing art since I was a child. I received uh, the creative part from my, my mother, and uh, she would always give me unconventional art projects to do. And uh, I could remember one of them distinctly was that uh, she was going through the shed and she found some cans of paint and they had a little bit of paint left in them, but she didn't want to throw the cans of paint out because she didn't really want to waste it. She wanted to use it on something. So she decided to um, give me the cans of paint and she asked me to do, um, she asked me to paint the patio, the grounds of the patio. And she said to me that I could do whatever I wanted. Um, and uh, as long as I just use up all the paint. So um, I did a beautiful abstract. Don't ask me how I did it, but I did it. <laughs> and I can still remember it, you know, the design until this day. Um, you know, back then we didn't have cameras and stuff, so we couldn't take any pictures of it, unfortunately. But um, yeah, so um, then, you know, as I had gotten older, I was looking for uh, something to do that would challenge me. And um, I decided to save up, you know, some money and um, buy a camera. So I remember I bought a Canon, um, the AE-1, and it was manual. I had no clue. I just looked up to see, you know, what was a decent camera. And um, I figured, you know, it was, it was a little, you know, small goal. And so um, when I had gotten it, um, I, uh, I didn't know how to use it. So I just, you know, wung it. I just like started taking pictures, playing around with it, you know, trial and error. And um, uh, I like, basically slept with the camera because uh, I wanted to know, you know, a whole bunch of stuff um, about it. And uh, I think the way that, you know, that happens is if you, you keep playing around with it and, um, you know, you're going to have mistakes and stuff. So you just learn from your mistakes. And so that's how, you know, it actually started. And then um, I was, you know, traveling all over the world um, and uh, my mother had taken ill and she, you know, had passed away and it was really difficult for me to, um, get over that. Um, I was really struggling with it and a friend of mine had suggested that maybe, you know, pick up a paintbrush and, you know, some paints and, you know, some paper and just start playing around with it. So what I did was I took some of the photographs and... Uh, because I had no training uh, as far as like with painting, I went ahead, I was playing around with it. Sometimes I did, um, you know, close-ups, I did angles um, of uh, some of the shots that I had taken, some of the photo uh, photographs that I had taken. And um, I just started to experiment with, um, you know, some different types of medium. And that's really what started my whole um, career as an artist and allowed me to make life-changing decision because I figured I really loved doing that and I wanted to do what I loved. And, you know, life is really short. So it was a life-changing um, decision to make and, and I went ahead and I made it. And then that's when I decided to um, go back to school. Um, so, yeah, so that in itself, 
<laughs> it's a small part of the story. I mean, I could go on forever. But um, yeah, so my um, education started at that point because I wanted to have some formal training. And um, uh, so that's when I decided to go back to school. Did going to school allow you to learn or like allow you to open a new door to your like artistic process? Yes, definitely. Because at that point, I was just really doing um, what was coming to me and I didn't have any training. So um, I remember one time I, you know, I took um, a painting lesson from an artist and um, it was a still life oil painting. And, um, you know, so everything was set up and I had to, you know, paint what I saw. So, um, you know, she would come over to me and look at what I was doing and said, oh, no, you don't do it like that. You do it like this. And I'm saying to myself, yeah, but I don't see it like that. <laughs> so you know, it, didn't make, it didn't make sense to me at the time. But because of the training that the formal training through school, um, that allowed me to understand what it was that, you know, she was actually explaining to me, um, you know, years before that. So, yes, uh, definitely the formal training, uh, my schooling definitely helped me learn all of the rules. And then, you know, once you learn them, you can break them. But, you know, you, you really should learn the rules first. So, um, yeah. And then, you know, once I applied the rules, I didn't lose my technique, but they changed, um, you know, um, it changed my approach. So, um, you know, I was selling a lot of um, paintings prior to my schooling. And then once my schooling started, um, I didn't sell as much. And then once I was able to incorporate the two, that's when I just, you know, that's when I started to, you know, sell again. So, um, yeah, it was, um, it definitely helped. <laughs> <laughs> In your artist statement, you state that emotion is a huge part of your work. Can you tell us about the importance of the emotional spirit and what does that mean to you? Sure. Um, the importance of emotion to me is uh, the, the normal state of mind and spiritually is the highest state of mind. So I think anybody can be emotional at any given point. Whereas someone with a pure mind and thought alone can be spiritual. Um, so I think that um, spiritual is being in the moment. And um, it's also a uh, realization to explore the deeper meaning in life. And it reflects our actions of um, beliefs and values. Um, and then, um, you know, whereas with emotion, emotion is like a, a measurement of our happiness and fulfillment with ourselves. That's what I believe. But, you know, everybody has their own perception of what that means. But that's, you know, that's what it means to me. Definitely. Since your work is very emotionally charged, a swift amounts of color and pattern. Um, can you tell us how, how do you harness that emotion? Um, do you come back to it or do you like work it in one sitting? Uh, yeah. So my emotions dictate, uh, you know, being with the, the emotional spirit and I believe it's through um, intuition, probably, you know, most likely. That's how I could explain it, like, realistically. And um, I, you know, I start off with mark making. And, um, you know, then I, you know, I go ahead and play around with color and texture. And then I... Um, apply all of that until, you know, I'm satisfied. And then um, the image, you know, like once I, I do all of that, the image presents itself. 
I'll play around with the painting. I'll turn it, you know, all different ways and, you know, the image uh, presents itself. You know, the majority of my paintings are done in one sitting. Uh, because um, each sitting has a different emotional spirit. And once, you know, like maybe, you know, like the phone rings, that's why I try not to bring my phone with me wherever I paint. <laughs> Uh, it, you know, like sometimes I'll be outside and I'll leave my phone inside mm -hmm. um, because once the phone rings, I'm distracted and everything changes. So I can't get back into what, what it was that I was, you know, feeling. And uh, so, yeah, if, if I leave it alone, if, if, it's, if it's not finished, and uh, I go back to it a second time. It usually changes completely because I'm not in the same, um, you know, spiritual mode I was in when I you know, first started it. So, um, uh, yeah. Yes, changes. Um, in your series, Mix, viewers see this constant theme of texture within your painting. It especially is displayed in one of my favorites, Mix, one <laughs> 332 um, is texture a central part of your artistic style yes i um my paintings usually have a lot of layers mm -hmm. and um you know i'm not going to say one of the layers but maybe a few of the layers holds uh texture and i believe that texture is a huge part of my um, artistic style because um, it gives the painting a visual feel. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe that, you know, color is, uh, it's a form of expression along with uh, the movement of, um, you know, each stroke of the brush or whatever tool I'm using. Sometimes I use leaves, sometimes I use branches, sometimes I just use, you know, my hands or whatever, a piece of cardboard. Um, whatever is close to me in order for me to complete whatever it is that I'm trying to get out of me. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, I think, um, you know, it could be, you know, the most important part of painting really, uh, besides the beauty of like the richness and um, it just creates mood and expresses uh, emotion. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, uh, I think, I think that, um, that about, you know, says it. <laughs> When looking at mix one, one, 307 and mix 1608, <laughs> you describe, uh, demonstrate a harmony of colors and betray such respect for your paint when only like showing a chaotic movement. Um, is a solid understanding of color and like the harmony of colors an essential part of your work? What do you feel when you look at the image that has such intense amount of color? So I believe um, for color to be a form of expression mm -hmm. and, um, you know, also with the movement, um, you can tell um, that if the brush stroke is a long brush stroke, there's, you know, a lot more expression as opposed to a short brush, um, brush stroke. Um, and, you know, the other thing that I wanted to mention was um, the reason why I, first off, um, number my paintings as opposed mm -hmm. to give them names is because I got that from uh, Jackson Pollock. I had to do mm -hmm. um, a presentation on, on Jackson Pollock one time, and he made a lot of sense when he was explaining that a, a majority of his paintings were also numbered. Mm -hmm. and he would say that... Um, he did that because he didn't want to suggest anything to the viewer. Yeah. Um, he wanted them to come to their own conclusion as far as um, what they felt about it. So mm -hmm. I kind of thought that was really, you know, pretty cool. So I said to myself, you know what? I do so many paintings. 
um, that I also think that, um, you know, that I agree with, with what he's saying instead of the viewer um, being suggested by a name of um, a painting mm -hmm. that I believe, you know, it's, it's really important for them to actually um, come to some sort of a, a conclusion unless, you know, I'm doing something specific, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I'm doing this one series. Um, I'll tell you about that after, but uh, <laughs> um, I, you know, I named the series mm -hmm. and because I, you know, it was specific. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I'll, I'll let you know about that, you know, after, but yeah, color definitely is a huge um, mm -hmm. expression of, um, um, you know, a, a huge form of expression. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like it's harder, like you mentioned before, um, doing it in a way of what Drax and Pollock did and only numbering it, um, and your paintings being so abstract, do you feel that um, it's harder for the audience to connect with your piece since it's in an abstract form and not a traditional, well, not, not portraiture, not landscape? Do you feel like it's a different feel? Um. Well, you know what, I've noticed that what draws the attention is the um, relation that the viewer has with the colors mm -hmm. of the painting. So, for example, if someone really likes, um, you know, purple, Mm -hmm. and there's purple in the painting, it'll draw, you know, their attention. Mm -hmm. um, so if, you know, somebody likes yellow or red or, you know, whatever, because I, I do a lot of bright colors. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that's what really draws the attention is the color itself. And then they look at the line and texture mm -hmm. um, of the painting. So, um, yeah, I think that's what what draws them to um, their own, own um, conclusion. Yeah, yeah, conclusion and relationship to mm -hmm. to the painting itself. Of all your works, which one is your favorite? Do you have any particular attachment to any of them? <laughs> my paintings are my babies. You know, it's just so hard for me to um, to pinpoint one specific um, painting. Um, I just have a connection, mm -hmm. you know, with them. And, um, you know, it, it, it's, it would be really challenging to just mm -hmm. pick just, you know, one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So, um, um, you know, I, I, I wouldn't be able to. <laughs> 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 Understandable. Um, well, we're coming to our conclusion of our interview, but I'd like to thank you for like coming here, or well, coming in this virtual space and talking to me about your art. But if there's any thoughts or lingering feelings, be free, feel free to say whatever you have the space for now. <laughs> um, so yeah, so currently my paintings are, um, they're being displayed in mm -hmm. uh, a couple of um, different places. One is at um, Inspire Art Gallery and Studio, mm -hmm. and that's in Dunellen, mm -hmm. New Jersey. Um, that'll be, that show will be up until, I believe, the end of August. And then um, I have some other paintings that are in a uh, City Hall group exhibition mm -hmm. in Jersey City. Uh, it's a uh, it's a you know it's a group exhibition mm -hmm. um, that'll be until um i believe uh, i want to say the end of august early september and then um i i'm also in a um virtual show uh, it's a student exhibition that starts august 18th and that's at william patterson university uh, that'll be until the middle of September. So, um, yeah, uh, the the one series that I was talking to you about yeah. that's a little different. I wanted mm -hmm. to mention um, 
this series is about uh, when I was a little girl, mm. my parents had to work. Mm -hmm. um, so my, um, I have two older brothers and my brothers were able to stay by themselves, but you know, because I was the youngest mm -hmm. and I was so small and stuff, my mother didn't want to leave me with my brothers. <clears throat> so, um, she found a babysitter and back then, you know, it, it was really hard to find, you know, somebody because everybody was out working, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so my mother found a neighbor and this woman, her name was Jerry. Um, she had two daughters of her own too, but I would go there every morning, like really early morning, like six 30 in the morning. And mm -hmm. I would sit outside on the bench and stuff. And, you know, I made a lot of different friends because I was there, you know, by myself and mm -hmm. whoever, you know, like they, at the time, one of my neighbors used to have horses. So they used to go really early in the morning to, um, you know, take care of the horses and then, and come back. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we used to talk and, you know, there was a contractor that, you know, used to, you know, talk to me. Mm -hmm. To this day, I mean, these people are really old. Some are deceased or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I remember as, a, you know, a little girl mm -hmm. and um, they used to give me a nickname. Um, the nickname was called uh, Petunia. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So for years and years and years, everybody used to call me Petunia. Mm -hmm. And... Um, <clears throat> The woman that used to watch me, um, mm -hmm. she passed away, but I'm still in touch with her two daughters. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, after I post some things online, um, you know, they'll always comment and they'll always, you know, mention Petunia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> so it's adorable. So mm -hmm. I'm doing um, I'm doing a series of mm -hmm. these faces of, um, you know, they're playful faces and mm -hmm. the series is going to be called Petunia. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm working on now. It's something a little bit different than what I yeah, know. It's very about. different. <laughs> but, yeah. I kind of thought, you know, let me, you know, let me see if I could go ahead and, um, you know, do something in memory of. So, um, yeah. Go keep a lookout. That sounds so beautiful. Um, <laughs> I hope we can see more of you in our gallery and I thank you for see, uh, coming here again today and we hope to see Petunia <laughs> very soon. I hope you have a nice day. Thank you so much for having me once again and you have a great day also.